Hello and welcome to episode 3 of The Island. I'm Bon Bon B, you're very, very welcome. Yes, this is the show that you begged, absolutely begged me to make. Bon Bon, make a city build, do a city build, please do a let's play. So, here we are, we're doing a let's play. We're at episode 3 already. It's going to be my own style of let's play where we focus on showing you bits and bobs that other let's players won't have time to show you while they're too busy showing you how to make a very pretty city. Now in time this will hopefully become a very pretty city such as my very pretty highway here with my very pretty elevated highway ramp. There'll be more to come of the pretty stuff but sometimes it's all about keeping things sane, keeping things stock and uh, sometimes you want to do some basic vanilla stuff as well so We'll try and do a little bit of everything in this series along the line. So if you're a console player, hopefully there'll be some things in here occasionally that'll work for you as well. And so we turn the camera back around, head back to our industrial zone. No, before we get to the industrial zone, have a look at these pillars under here. I feel there should be a pillar around about there. There's one missing. Let's move this road and see if the pillar arrives. There we go, and there's got to be a pillar under there now. Surely. No, that's weird. Move it right out of the way. I'm using the Move It mod here, by the way. Um, I'll pop uh, a replacement pillar in place. It just weren't going to pop back in. That was very strange indeed. Now, I'm just going to place the pillars at a distance along the route here, which I feel is a lot more realistic. It might want to rotate that. about that way? Uh, huh? Yeah, I'm happy with that. So yeah, so we're gonna need, we're gonna need a f uh, maybe a couple of extra sets of pillars, and we're just gonna have some sort of believable distance between because some of these some of these gaps within the uh, base game a little bit wider than would feel realistic, especially if you've got pillars hiding under a road, which we do see quite regularly. Uh, just uh, correcting a little slope on the ramp there. Oh, that pillar's reappeared. How? That's the weirdest thing. It was only after I aligned the uh, the slope there, made the slope more believable, that that pillar suddenly decided to pop back in. Anyways, so yes, um, popping in a few pillars along here, that makes that feel a lot more believable. And I, I'm happy with most of that. Maybe one more set of pillars under here somewhere. It's not quite as wide as the main highway, but uh, let's push that in there. And how's that looking? That's not bad. I'm just going to tweak it down a little bit more. And there's good. Pillars, now done. <laughs> no more screams at me on social media about doing your pillars, bomb bomb. Okay, over to the industrial area. There's far more to come over here. But what I would like is for the buildings not to change. Because I kind of like these level one buildings down here. And what I'm going to do here is just make them all historic. Now, when you have a building set to historic, they will level up, but the appearance will not change. So if you have a specific style of building that you're looking in a certain location, hit that historic button. What's that? Apparently it's residential. That's weird. <laughs> Don't know what's been going on, but some weird things in the game have been going on. I'll pop that in at a slight angle there, make that historic. And there's um, a few more historic buildings over here to make into history. <laughs> Keep them in place. Now there are one or two little changes over here I want to do, just one or two of them, to make this area feel. And I think we'll come back and make some more minor changes as the game, as the city grows as we go along. For example, that gap there. I think I'd like this asset here in that gap. Mind that car does not move. Leave it room to be parked. It's moved. What are you parking in amongst those planks for? That was weird. No planks there. <laughs> Why did you move? Anyway, yes, we'll 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 pop a few more um, assets here and there where required. Like there, I, this, would this be grass or would it be concrete or would it be a mix? Hmm. I think all concrete in there. A little patch of concrete at the end here. Probably do something down there just to fill that gap at some point. And we'll grab a couple of extra assets to fill these gaps down here. Maybe put that one a little bit further back, give a bit of a forecourt, and put in something a little bit different in that odd gap there. Make it look like it's part of the other asset. Just by plopping it down a little bit further back from the road on the same angle as the previous one. 
and then using uh, Surface Painter, we looked at last week, I think it was last week, uh, to just concrete out a few other little areas like that. And another residential building, how? What is going on? Am I losing my, my nuggets here, I think? I think I am. Let's just delete those two. Probably, yes. <laughs> that is zoned as residential. How? Um, let's make that into one large um, unit there and we'll grab a different unit in there on these crumbling ones In fact, I quite like the uh, concrete in front of that crumbling away. I'll leave it as it is We'll pop that one down the end and I'm gonna do a dirt road around to the back connecting these two up I think we'll probably find a way of doing something similar um, with one of the other uh, roads at the end of the uh, industrial area Gravel, mix of concrete and gravel. Mmm, finding that balance and that sweet stuff. Now, there, there are a whole bunch of, uh, a few of you are going to be saying, why don't you use this decal? Why don't you use um, ploppable asphalt and such? Yes, 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 we will be. But I'm trying not to do too much in any one episode in terms of bringing new things to people that are completely new to this style of gaming so uh, there's gonna be plenty of new things to look for today if you're if you're new to modding if you're new to this style of game uh, yes plenty on today's show to watch out for um, again uh, what I'm what I'm doing here in terms of putting down these buildings well, I'll explain some of that later on in the show, along with, um, oh, hang on, hang on. Look at these billboards. They're glowing. They just, they're too bright. Now, we can fix this. We can very much fix this with a mod called Hide It by Kilu. Now, you can hide almost anything in the game using this. Uh, we're gonna be clicking on billboards and that will remove the billboards there. And now this feels a lot more generic i'm going to use move it to create what i call a parade okay a parade of shops certainly in the united kingdom we call any run of shops that are on one long row like that without any gaps in between um a parade of shops it's usually like a suburban like a little shopping run that kind of thing the, the sort that you'd have at the end of your road and uh so yeah that's uh a little parade of shops so we're going to be doing that with also um we've got some slightly different variations on that building there as well with a bit of parking on the end which i like to think that that would be some sort of like a doctor's or accountant's somewhere where you, they they would park their car alongside or be parking for visitors i feel that's uh, certainly a thing to do uh this little cluster of little restaurants i felt would look quite interesting as one larger unit so i'm going to pop them together into a shape that i feel is kind of believable a bit deeper than the previous uh, incarnation of it and there is something that goes wrong with this which you'll see a bit later on so hang on in there wait for the uh, wait for the bomb bomb boo boo because there uh, it's it's a live build there's going to be bomb bomb boo boos all right, so making a slightly a curved parade of shops here to um, bring us up to the big bite, which also has a bomb bomb boo boo in it. So uh, watch out for that one in the second half of the show. Bringing these um, buildings down using the page down button uh, just to a height that uh, works better. And now we'll work on the other side of the road and got a little bit of bumpy ground underneath there. I want to have sort of like a flatter car park. So by leveling out the ground means that those cars should sit more comfortably once we level out the buildings there as well. And that should be a lot flatter. -er -er -er. So yes, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a build with plenty in it. I thought with the parade there might be interesting if we separate up the buildings as well uh, on that side of the road for no reason. Literal no reason. Just to just to add a bit of difference as we go. Uh, as we go up the street, otherwise it can be a bit boring. I know that there are various other sort of um, level one uh, vanilla commercial buildings, and we will be at some point using custom buildings as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a feel about these ones that I felt worked really well on this particular neighbourhood. A couple of vanilla planters there, 
and um, a little planter down here. Oh, workshop planters, I beg your pardon. These are workshop planters. Uh, I haven't got a note of who made these ones. They might be King Leno. Uh, and uh, a few of the vanilla tables around the back. We'll be doing a little bit more work around the back to make this kind of like all tie in together. Uh, maybe in the next show, maybe in the one after, but it will happen. I uh, need to find a smaller tree for decorating that area. Now over to this area and I'm gonna make this residential area here feel a lot cleaner and a lot more real. Now, first of all, we have a custom asset here. These are Californian bungalows. I will link these into the description down below. Unfortunately, I don't to hand have the creator's name uh, for them. So I apologize to the creator for not giving you a verbal shout out, but trust me, you're getting a link into the description. So hopefully um, that will work for you. Uh, we're using a mod here called Plop the Growables. Now, Plop the Growables is by TPB, and it's a really lovely mod that instantly makes your buildings historic, so they're not going to change. When you plop these down, these are actually level three um, light residential, so they, these would have to grow up to this at a point, but we're going straight in with this particular aesthetic, and, uh, and they're not going to change, which is cool. They're not going to change. Now, there is an alternative to Plop the Growables, which is Plopable Rico, originally by AJ3D, and now the new version or the updated version is by Algernon, uh, which is Plop the Growables Revisited. Uh, now, what uh, what that does is that, in it, because by plopping the Growables is fine, but what happens if you want an active police station or something like that? Well, then you need something that's going to keep all of the police station settings or the factory settings that sort of thing so what you would use there is ploppable rico i do have a tutorial for the basics of a ploppable rico as well it's one of my most watched videos so you might want to have a little look for that in uh, on my channel if you want to know how it works but for this we'll be using we'll be playing with uh i, I mostly use I usually use plop the uh, plop the growables just because it's uh, it just it's just easy it, and it's just you just forget about it. you plop it you forget about it and they are good to stay. Now, one thing that I hadn't considered as I was doing this because I was too busy talking aloud, thinking aloud, and getting uh, just getting on with the build was I paused the simulation. Now, this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is a very bad idea because this game we have something called death waves and at some point I expect there's going to be a death wave on this neighborhood because I've popped down a lot of houses all at the same time and when you pop down a whole load of houses at the same time how how the game works is when people move into your city for the first time they all move in at the same age let's say 20 years of age well, arguments say 20 years of age only thing is in the game everybody dies at the same age let's say 80 years of age if <laughs> you're over 80 i'm sorry but i've just killed you off but uh, yes so uh, you, you, they, they come at 20 they die at 80 and well if everybody arrives on the same day to fill all these houses on the same day we are going to end up with a lot of people all dying at the same time which is going to be great because our poor little crematorium, it's it's equipped to handle a certain amount of deaths, not all simultaneously. And it's going to become overrun and overwhelmed. So we, we can expect that to happen. <laughs> we can expect that to happen. Um, but um, we will have an extra crematorium here or there dotted around. So hopefully we can stay on top of it. But yes, uh, the simulation is going to be let run before we actually pop down any more um, uh, residential areas. Now, I do have a, a building a perfect cul-de-sac tutorial. Unfortunately, when I started doing this, I didn't realize I had um, a ploppable asphalt, which is another great mod. We'll talk about that when I actually use it. I didn't realize I didn't have that one active. So um, 
I'm going to have to need to go into my settings and uh, into the content manager and activate that as well. So we won't be able to finish doing that just yet, but uh, for now, it's just a little bit of a, a clunky looking cul-de-sac there. Okay, here's all the people moving in to this new area, which is going to probably just about double the population of our city in a few minutes. Now, if you're looking at the old area, the first area at the top, we will be upgrading that at some point. But for now, for now, I think we're good to go with this one. It's perfectly acceptable to have um, a, an ugly area until we can get time to upgrade it. So there we go. Right, so that is the, um, that's the way for people moving in altogether. Now you may notice we've got a couple of weird anomalies along the commercial area. These are the bomb bomb boo boos. Somebody, i.e. me, forgot to set every building along here to be historic. And so, yes, we'll be um, we'll be replacing these buildings and redoing the job that we did earlier, more or less, as close as we can, uh, by dropping that building back into there. And I had trouble finding the oh god, hang on. What's going on over here? Just uh, yeah, just put, making every building historic. I forgot. I forgot that I went back and did this. But yes, every building along here was pretty much non-historic and needs fixing, um, and it's been done. And then this one over here is clearly not the same building. So we're just going to do a copy and paste using Move It, which will make that automatically historic because the building was historic already. Yes, I couldn't find the big boy again, <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Donuts. Everybody, oh, pancakes. Everybody loves pancakes. It's batter, okay? It's just a different sort of batter. Right, um, uh, detailing now. Now, this is going to be a very quick fly. I'm not going to spend hours getting everything to perfection, unlike some other YouTubers, because no point in me trying to compete with them. But uh, we will be doing some light detailing. And uh, by light, I mean here we're going to be popping down fences to separate up all of these plots uh, they're not gonna all be absolutely perfectly matched up but it's gonna be hopefully good enough that from a moderate height I mean we're talking you know the sort of height that we're standing now rather than getting in right in and looking at the nitty-gritty of perfection Hopefully these are going to be good enough, and I think it's probably good enough for most of you when you'll be doing your city builds. Um, those of you that have got OCD will be screaming, but if you don't have OCD or it's not, if it's controllable OCD, I think you'll be fine here. Uh, these are just the um, I know that one around a bit better. That's a bit better. Uh, yeah. So th these are just uh, the large fence. Uh, this was, I think, with After Dark. Pretty sure this is actually an After Dark fence. Uh, so yes, this one comes with that DLC. If you haven't got the DLC, you won't be able to use it. And then what we're going to do is um, just do some connecting in between with the big fences. And then using the small fence, the half-length fence, to sort of fill in a few of these mini gaps in between. Sort of. But where it doesn't quite match up, it's going to be fine because we are going to do just enough to suspend the disbelief of a gap in the fence by uh, using foliage to hide the gaps as well. Uh, and then um, this little area here, I'm not sure what to do with that. Maybe just a little bit of scrubland or something like that. Maybe a little tree. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll think about that one. It's down by by the park anyway. Speaking of parks, I did plop down a, a couple of parks right at the start. Didn't really see it. The park right there in the top of the screen you're looking at now, that is the Shady Park by some shady creator. I can't remember his name, but I think it begins with Bonbon bon something. And uh, yeah, that was one, one of the first few assets I've ever made. You may have some problems with it. Um, I do believe it has um, some networks in it. So um, you, you may you may have some issues with it. I, I don't know, I haven't tested it lately, but um, I, I have had a little bit of feedback that um, it doesn't always work for everybody. So, um, but yes, I've done that. And on top of that, down by the entrance, the, um, where will we be? Southern entrance to this neighborhood, there is a, um, a play park, one of the small play parks along there as well. 
Now these fences along here, you'll see me put them in place, yeah? You'll see me put these in place. When we get to the end of the show, when you get to the flyovers, these will have disappeared. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I have to go back and check um, in my free time at some point or when I go back to do the build to try and work out what has happened there, whether, whether we've got some sort of anarchy issue or whatever. Uh, but yes, um, using using just using find it here to um, use to find the item and just to plop these ones down in terms of just regular detailing. A few of these you will require uh, prop and tree anarchy to um, to get them to build in with the houses, but uh, that's that's for a different day. Now just trying to find the right trees that aren't going to be too overpowering for the neighborhood because some of these trees can feel a bit on the big side. I mean that will fit quite neatly into there. Those bushes feel a little bit big but we may swap them over in a few minutes time if we can find something a little bit smaller. And yes, using these kind of like as um, like hedges or bush filler areas just to fill these gaps in between these fences so it feels a little bit more plausible and uh, and we'll go back again in a minute with um with some different foliage just to break up the monotony because it is going to be if you use the same thing too often it becomes very clear that that is what you've used all the time and if you can blend into the mix uh, a second tree or a second sort of fence or a second sort of building uh, then sometimes it, it can just bring a bit more realism without having to overdo things too much now using the small bush actually the small bush for me is a really ugly bush but it it works in great combo it works in great combo with this bush as well um yes they don't quite match up with the trees in my shady park well that shady park was planted specifically for those trees so shush now <laughs> okay so shush now uh, that bit of um, that little corner of land there I'm thinking will be some sort of scrub land so we'll probably go in and do something with that how about how about now uh, oh juniper trees first of all let's do some juniper trees just for detailing again these are sort of trees that people who have in their gardens just a few dotted around in the larger gardens and I think the larger gardens could probably do here and there with a swimming pool so we may go and do that uh, the scrub etc I'm using the the natural nature trees that are dotted around as well so they fill in quite nicely as well and uh, yeah there's a big garden here so we'll put a swimming pool in that garden and looking around for a decent sized garden this one this one's on the squint that's on the slope I think we could probably make this work on the slope in fact I'm going to make this the feature garden the one garden where I put a bit of extra foliage in as well and that I feel has to be it for this week's show has to be so that's about it we've done a little bit of industrial work again we'll come back to this area the industrial area and do a little bit more simple work like this just to tie up a couple of the loose ends around the edge of the industrial area plus i feel that we're going to have to do a little bit of industrial work because there are going to be jobs needed and i'm still trying to play a kind of a balance game although i'm playing an infinite money game a balance game where the jobs are are given we, we, we make sure everybody's got a job to go and do and uh, that's the plan anyway and so i think we're done I think we've made it to the end of another show. Thank you very much for making it to the end with me. I've been Bon Bon B. You have, of course, been very, very welcome. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss this or what map or any of my tutorials or anything like that. Oh, by the way, I ran out of electricity. <laughs> so I had to pop down a couple of windmills. Uh, we'll be doing the power station soon. Uh, that's look forward to. Uh, plus much, much more. That's it from me. As I said, I've been Bon Bon B. You've been very, very welcome and I'll see you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.